last time on Lost Odyssey. General, our own troops are in the line of fire. Well, then they better be able to dodge arrows. That's what happened last time. And make sure you stick around to the end to get a special sneak peek. We're picking up where we left off. It appears we've been imprisoned. Oh, there's Seth. And Jansen and his goofy glasses. Morning. You okay? Yeah. Hey, uh, great game plan there, getting ourselves knocked out and captured. Hey, that's brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Don't rub it in. Every situation has a way out. We'll just have to use plan B. Or C. When you said to aim at the pipe, did you have a plan B or was getting captured plan B? How about a plan G, like get the hell out of here? I mean, you've evolved a thousand years and, and, and guess what? We're still captured. Huh? Brilliant. <laughs> <sighs> Give it a rest. Oh, I got plenty of time to rest. Because we're captured. captured. Hey, Kai. Come on, help me out here. Looks like we are going to do one of our thousand year dreams. Now if this isn't your thing, just like all the other times, I'll leave a timestamp in the description. Just click that timestamp. It'll take you directly to the end of the dream. But if this is something you do want to listen to, then here we go. A dream has been revealed. They live in shells. He is in darkness, unlike the darkness of night. It is enclosed, devoid of depth or expanse. He hears a heavy door slowly rumbling open. A shaft of light shoots in, but it is not so well defined as that. To eyes accustomed to nothing but darkness, however, the faint gleam feels like a shower of sparks. Stop this, please, I beg of you, let me go. A young man's screams echo through the emptiness. No voice answers him. Crouching in the darkness, Kaim counts the footsteps. Three men have come in. The disorderly footsteps probably belong to the young man. The other two are perfectly regular. Please, I'm begging you. If it's money you want, I'll get you all you could ask for on the outside. I promise. I won't forget to show my thanks to you. Please. The only reply of the two men who have brought the young one here is the clunk of an iron lock opening. No, no, please. I am begging you. I'll do anything you want. Anything. A dull thud is the sound of flesh tearing, bone wrenching. Someone collapses on the floor. A strangled scream. Ah <laughs> The clunk of an iron lock closing. Kayam knows the young man has been thrown into the shell diagonally opposite of his own. When you are locked into one of these windowless shells, your hearing becomes acutely sensitive. Don't do this. Let me out of here. Please, let me out of here. From the sound of the voice, Kayam can imagine a young man's face with boyish traces. A small-time hoodlum, hardly a step above a teenage gang member. When he was still on the streets, no doubt, he used to swagger down the sidewalk, his cunning but cowardly eyes darting every which way. The two men who have brought him here maintain their footsteps moving off together. 
The heavy doors open and closes again. Left alone in the darkness, the young man howls his entreaties for a time, but when he realizes they will do no good, he shouts himself hoarse, spitting out one curse after another until he begins to sob. Quiet down there, an old man calls out from one of the inner shells. It won't do you any good to make a fuss. Time to give up, sonny. This is the voice of the oldest man living in the dozen or so shells lined in the darkness. He was already here when Kaim was sent to this place. It is always his role to quiet and comfort the obstreperous newcomers. If you got time to bawl like that, keep your eyes closed. Huh? Just make sure you keep sucking on your memories of the outside. Like a piece of candy. Sounds of suppressed laughter come from the surrounding shells. Kaim joins in with a smile and a sigh. All the shells in the dark are supposedly full, but a few of their inhabitants are laughing. Most of them have lost the strength to laugh. Hey, Sonny. The old man continues his role as advisor to the newcomer. No point in making a fuss. Just calm down and accept your fate. Otherwise... And here, a note of intensity enters the old man's voice. They'll just drag you out of here, feet first. This is exactly what happened yesterday to the former inhabitant of the young man's shell. He had been screaming on and off for a day. Then came a day of banging his head against the shell wall. Then nothing. Until he was dragged out in silence. So get a hold of yourself, Sonny. Don't let the darkness swallow you up. Close your eyes and imagine nice scenery from the outside. The bigger the better. The ocean or the sky, or some huge field of grass. Remember, imagine that's the only way to survive this place. This was the advice he always gave to newcomers. But the young man screamed tearfully. Who the heck do you think you're kidding? Survive this place? And then what? I know what this place is. No exit prison. They throw the lifers in here. Give them just enough food to keep them alive, and in the end, they kick the bucket anyways. Am I right? There's nothing left to hope for. The shouts turn to sobs again. This is the reaction of most newcomers. Nor are they mistaken. This is a prison. Each of the shells is a solitary cell with bars, and the sun shines on a prisoner only on the day of his funeral. Everybody dies, Sonny. That's for sure. You just can't let your mind go before your body does. Hope doesn't have to fade unless you throw it out yourself, the old man goes on softly. Then he adds with feeling, This system we live under can't last much longer either. The old man is a political prisoner. As leader of an anti-government faction, he long resisted the dictatorship until... He finally lost the struggle and was imprisoned. The young man has no ears for the old man's words, however. He continues thrashing on the floor and crying. The fellow won't be in his shell much longer than his predecessor. In a few days, or in less than a month at best, he will go to pieces. The darkness is that powerful. Depriving a prisoner of light is far crueler than taking his life in an instant. My, my. The old man reflects. This fellow is not going to do as much good in a prison break. The old revolutionary laughs. It might be a genuine laugh or a bold front, but in any case, almost no laughs. <laughs> the old revolutionary laughs. It might be a genuine laugh or a bold front, but in any case, almost no one laughs in response. Tomorrow morning, or rather, since there is no clear-cut morning, in the darkness, after they go to sleep, wake up, and have their next meal, another cold corpse will be dragged out wordlessly from another shell.
Hey, listen. How many of us are here now? The old revolutionary asks. Answer if you can hear me. I can hear you, Kaim says. He is the only voice. This is bad. We were full up a little while ago. The old man gives a dry chuckle. <laughs> Kaim asks. I wonder if something's happened out there. Maybe so, answers the revolutionary. If you ask me, this would be about the right time for a coup d'etat or a revolution. My boys aren't going to keep quiet much longer. Uh, what is your name again? Kaim? Have you noticed what's happening? How there used to be a lot more guys getting thrown in here until a little while ago. And most of them real nobodies, not worth sentencing to life. Uh-huh. Sure. The young man was one of them. Nothing but a small-time crook. It just so happened that the storehouse he broke into belonged to a rich man with ties to a powerful politician. This was the only reason they put him in a shell. The shells always used to be full. They would throw a bunch of men in here and they would die. Then new men would come and they would die. The young man was one of those. The terror of being enveloped in darkness was too much for him. And he went to pieces. He was apparently having hallucinations at the end. I am coming, Mama. I am coming. Wait for me, please, Mama. He repeated over and over like a child. Where are you, Mama? Here? Are you here? And he gouged his own eyes out with his bare hands. I figured things were getting scary out there. The cops losing control. So the government was really starting to crack down. Which is why these shells were always full. This is what brought the young man here. Blood streaming from his eye sockets. He died, muttering in snatches. What did I do? Everybody knows darn well. There are plenty of men way worse than me. But now this place is empty. Do you know what that means, Kaim? Sure. There's so much crime out there now that the government can't suppress it. You got it. The whole royal family might be strung up by now for all we know. It's a revolution. It'll happen any day now. That means you and I will get out of here. My boys will come and get us. Just hang in there a little while longer. Kaim nods in silence. The old revolutionary goes on. You're strong, Kaim. Not many guys could stay as calm as you. Thrown in the shell and enveloped in darkness like this. Not even Kaim can explain it. It is true that he was strangely calm when they put him in the shell. The darkness was something he seemed to recognize as a distant memory. In the distant past, he too may have tasted the anguish of the other shell inhabitants so tortured by fear of being sealed in darkness. How are you so tough mentally, Kaim? Does it mean you too are a revolutionary? No, not me. His crime was hardly worth talking about. He resisted somewhat under questioning when they brought him in as a suspect, and for that he was branded a rebel and thrown into a shell. The old man is probably right, though. The country's dictatorship is almost certainly in its last days. It won't be long now. We'll be back in the real world before we know it. I have hope right in here, and it will stay here until I abandon it myself. The old revolutionary mutters as if trying to convince himself. The prison falls soon afterward. Armed young men come charging into the darkness and open the shell's barred doors. Embraced by his boys, the old revolutionary goes out. Wait, Gaim cries, trying to hold him back. But he is too late. Anxious to see the new world following the destruction of the old system, the old revolutionary steps outside and opens his eyes. It is evening. Though the sun is nearly down, its light is still strong enough to burn eyes accustomed to total darkness. The old revolutionary presses his hands to his eyes and with a groan, crumples to his knees. Kaim has saved himself by shielding his eyes with his arm. Not even he knows what caused him to do this. Could distant memories have taught him that the truly frightening thing 
about punishment by darkness is what happens after the release from prison? When could I have been imprisoned? And where? More important, how long have I been on this endless journey? With bleeding eyes surrounded on the ground by his boys, the old revolutionary searches for Kain. I came all this way, Kain, only to make one terrible mistake at the bitter end. My eyes are probably useless now. This is precisely why he asks Kain for one last favor. Tell me, Kain, what is the outside world like? Has the revolution succeeded? Are the people happy? Are they smiling joyfully? Kaim opens his eyes slowly, and just barely, beneath the shade of his hand. As far as he can see, the ground is covered in bodies. The corpses of royal troops and revolutionary troops are heaped on one another, and countless civilians are dead. A mother lies dead with her small child in her arms, the bloody corpse of the child's father next to them, arms outstretched in a vain attempt to shield them. Tell me what you see. Kaim fights back a sigh and says, You must work from now on to build a happy society. The old revolutionary senses the truth. I won't abandon hope, Kaim, no matter what. As if to say, I know that. Kaim nods and begins to walk away. Where are you going? I don't know someplace. Why don't you stay here and build a new world with us? You of all people can do that. I know. Thank you, sir. But I'll be moving on just the same. The old revolutionary does not try anymore to hold Kaim back. Instead, as a parting gift, he repeats for Kaim the words he spoke so often in his shell. There will always be hope, wherever you are until you yourself abandon it. Never forget that. Kaim walks on. His eyes... His eyes chance to light on the body of a young boy lying at his feet. The boy breathes his last with his eyes wide open in fear. Kaim kneels and gently closes the boy's eyelids. He knows deep down, in a memory too far away for even him to reach that while darkness can be a great source of terror, it can also bring deep and lasting peace. End. Scared? What do you mean? Are you afraid? <laughs> afraid? <laughs> yeah, I am. At least he's of honest. Of course I'd be afraid in a situation like this. And I tell you what, I'd be lying if I wasn't saying that I was scared of you as well. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm afraid too. You're kidding. Interesting stare from Seth. Alright, let's hear from this General, general guy. Conus. Her Majesty, the Queen has bestowed upon me the honor of commanding all Numara's forces. I speak with Her Majesty's voice, and you shall answer my questions. Maybe. Go ahead, ask away. Ah, but no geography question. <laughs> what were you doing at Grand Staff? You are foreign spies, aren't you? We're, uh... uh... Just ordinary travelers. Yeah, travelers. That's what we are. Yeah, I'm the husband. Uh, over there is my wife. And uh, Mr. Chuckles there in the middle. He's my buddy. Yeah, uh, we were just surprised, you know, to see a building that huge while on our trip here. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think I'm a fool? That's Grand Staff, Aura's giant magic engine. And we are already aware that there is a link between that thing and the recent meteor crash. What I want to know is exactly what caused it to happen. 
I suppose none of you know anything. You're not <laughs> spying for Ura, are you? Or maybe Goatsa, huh? Hmm? I'm telling you, we're just travelers. Well, at least they're sticking to it. Come on, we're not spies. We don't know what happened. Come on, let us out of here. Ha! Huh. Since when do ordinary travelers display such masterful fighting skill? We're simply travelers. See, the correct questions to follow up and disprove what they are saying. Where did you travel from? Where are you traveling to? Where are your supplies? Ah, we have a great deal of skill in loosening obstinate tongue. Of course, the general doesn't seem to be a particularly patient individual. General! What is it? As we thought, our current equipment won't be enough to repair the white boa. The damage caused by the electrical discharge is too great. According to the tech officer, we'll have to bring it back to Namara and dock it for full repairs. Ah. From what the tech officer says, there's nothing that can be done about it. We'll suspend the operation and return to Namara. Yes, sir. Wait. What's our figurehead doing now? Her Majesty, sir? Ooh. It's not good when the general calls Queen a figurehead. She's in her quarters. We've been hearing harp music from there for a while now. The Queen? In a place like this? A figurehead? What? What's that? Hmm. How very refined. Well, if she loves music more than meddling, it makes things easier for me. I... yeah. Not liking this general guy. Not sure if he's really a villain, per se. Yes, sir. Time to prepare for departure. Inform the troops immediately. Yes, sir. He could just be doing his job. What the hell? Figurehead? They can't be talking about the Queen like that. What's got you so angry? That general's making a fool out of the Queen. Hey, what's this? I speak with her Majesty's voice. Crap. And it makes me sick. <laughs> You're worried about the Queen? Aren't streetwalkers more your type? Ugh. Ooh, witty. No, Namara's what bothers me. Hey, what the hell kind of country is it? Sounds like a seafood dish. <laughs> hey, and you over there, are you somehow involved with Numara? No. How did he get that? I'm not sure. I'm sure. A glowing white monument in the sky. Do you remember it? It feels like my memory is returning. Bit by bit. Uh oh. Yours should be too. Jansen. I get dreams. Magically bound. When you were talking so bitterly a while ago, was it about the dreams? Ah, oh, so the dreams scare you. <sighs> yeah. At least he's honest. I compared him to Squall before. He's really not. My memories seem to flood my dreams. He keeps dreaming of are her. Are they just dreams? Or are they my past? Hmm. Okay, we're still in our... Non shell cage. Okay. Let's see. Yep. We had an option to talk, didn't we? I just ran. And I'm going to tell you what. Captured. Rat. Put some 
kicked it. My guess is we kicked it to kind. Could be wrong. Less like a warship and more like a cruise liner. That design is not battle worthy. Loses yet again. like you just had a nightmare. Who's, uh, Lyrum? Must be some girl's name, huh? I don't know. Just that it's... it's very painful. Every time I have that dream. I guess you really are remembering bits and pieces, huh? You look like you don't want to remember. But it seems like the memories are starting to surface anyway. Well, there's no point in remembering them, is there? I swear, Kaim, you are such a pessimist. You know, a normal person would do anything to figure out who they were or where they'd been. Maybe I want to cut myself off from the past. You see, it's just oh, like I said. You just drop it? What? He can take his time and remember the past when he's ready. Can't you see? It's obvious that right now all it's doing is hurting him. Yes, ma'am. Begging your pardon, ma'am. What is your problem? Ah, uh, the gym. If Kaim hates his memories, I guess I might not even have to use this. And of course, Gangora gave him that to use if either Seth or Kaim started to remember. Listen, 
If either Kai or Seth seem like they're starting to regain even a fragment of their memories, use this. What is it? Let's just say it's a magic energy crystal. Just throw it at them. That's all you have to do, and their memories will grow muddled and sink back into darkness. If it comes down to that, I'll triple your pay. Well, let me think about that. Okay. What's that? This? I got it from Lord Gangora. It's, you know, what you might call being prepared. It's dangerous, isn't it? A little bit. Well, see for yourself. You use it like this. All right, we are in the brig. We missed something in the rat's nest. I hope it wasn't a slot seed, but I have a feeling it might be. That way. <laughs> Bring it on. Hmm. Uh, excuse me? Huh? What am I doing here? What's with him? Has he forgotten his job? He's temporarily lost his memory. What do you mean temporarily? You suddenly know everything? Whoa. Must be a magic energy crystal. Gongora, so that's it. He said to use it in a pinch, and that guy was pinching. Uh, why am I... What's going on? You, sir, are a soldier. Act like one. Huh? Okay. But how come... Listen, we're just ordinary travelers, but remember? There was this misunderstanding. Yeah, and we got thrown in the slammer. I hate to ask, but I have a hair appointment. Oh. Oh. Uh, but don't I need permission? You know, to release you guys? Well, that's what you came here to do, right? You came here to let us falsely accuse prisoners. Those are your words, not mine. Out of the brig. It's obvious. There was a mistake, you see? <laughs> Come on. Let's go. All right. I'm back to just thinking Jansen is incredibly awesome until his next stupid thing. I distinctly heard your boss tell you to come down and let us out. Hey, congratulations on the promotion, by the way. <laughs> what? Oh, that's right, you slipped and hit your head. Yeah, it looks like you've forgotten your duty. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, how embarrassing. Look, see that doohickey there? Yeah, it's probably plugged into a magic engine. I don't know, maybe it will open the door. Yeah, yeah, okay, that looks right. Sorry, you had to tell me how to do my job. Okay, almost got it. Painful. Just painful. Hang in there, soldier. So long, buddy. Oh, okay. Farewell. Take care. You're a sneaky one, aren't you? <laughs> what do you mean? It worked. Thanks for the help. Seriously, you could charm the skin off a snake with that kind of tongue. It still bothers me why Gongora would give you something like that pearl. But I should thank you. Just this once. Right, Kai? Yeah. All right. Talk to him. 
Okay, it's been a while since we saved. And I promised a let's play sneak peek at the end. Here's the thumbnail. Can you guess what it is? If not, visit our channel page for the trailer. And, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell notification, so you get every new episode and every new Let's Play as they come out. I'm Nidanoski. As always, have fun.